Hey guys, just a quick video now on picking up an IFR clearance from air traffic control. So here we are on the ramp at Baltimore Washington International Airport, and we want to look at filing a flight plan to Harrisburg International, Mike Delta Tango, and then picking up an IFR clearance to fly that route. So we can look at the route here in Skyvector or on our chart, and we'll start just by typing in the aircraft pair, or the airport pair, uh, BWI, and then Mike Delta Tango, which is the Harrisburg International Airport. So here's our direct route of flight. So now the question becomes, how do we want to plan uh, for a route? So an easy way to do that is just to actually look at what routes have been planned before. We can do that in FlightAware here. So now all I've done is looked at the city pair and then found a, a flight that went out recently. So here's a FedEx 1303 flight that was given a route EMI, which is the Westminster Vortac, uh, to Victor 265 and then on to the Harrisburg Vortac. So we can copy and paste that into Skyvector. And if we go over to our low and root chart, we can see what that looks like. So that basically takes us from BWI to the VOR. Here's the Westminster VOR. And then along Victor 265 to the Harrisburg VOR and then on direct to Harrisburg International Airport. We'll notice the minimum altitudes, 2,500 and 3,400. So we need to be above those altitudes. So because we're westbound, it'll be uh, an even altitude. So we'll plan 4,000. So now we can have a look at our flight plan and see how we might enter that information in uh, if we were using flight service or uh, really any other form of flight plan. So just real quick, quick running through the uh, things that we filed, we've got the airport ID, the flight rules IFR, flight type, number of aircraft, Cessna 172. Uh, we're departing BWI and we have our departure time and speed. Now we want to file for 4,000 feet, so it's going to be level 040. So just remember, you add two zeros to that to get your altitude and feet at 4,000 feet. There's surveillance equipment so they can see us. Now here's that route of flight that we found on flight aware and that we put in sky vector. So that's what we're going to file as our desired route of flight. Definitely want to have that information with us. We don't want to lose that after we filed uh, because the air traffic controller, as we'll see, might uh, refer to it. And finally, we got destination as Mike Delta Tango, the Harrisburg airport. Now jumping back in the cockpit, the first thing we want to do after we started up the airplane is we want to go ahead and get an IFR clearance from the air traffic controller. An IFR clearance is structured in a certain way and when it's said to you or when it's given to you by an air traffic controller, they're going to be giving you information in a specific order. So that order starts off with the very first thing, which is your clearance limit. This is where you're cleared to. It could be the airport you file to, it could be a VOR, it could be a fix, some intermediate point along uh, the route to your final destination. 99 times out of 100, it is going to be that final destination you filed. So we would expect the clearance limit to be the airport we filed for Harrisburg. Next is the route of flight. Now we filed our route of flight, but that doesn't mean air traffic control is going to give us that route. They could give us an amended route clearance, or even when we're airborne, the, uh, the air traffic controller down the road might change it up again. So here, when we get our clearance, we'll be writing down our route of flight. Next is the altitude. Sometimes we'll be cleared to like an initial altitude and then told 10 minutes later, or 10 minutes after departure, to expect a final altitude. Uh, or they might just give us one altitude. I suspect on a shorter flight, we might just get one assigned altitude. Next is the frequency. This is the departure frequency. This is the controller that you're going to be talking to as soon as you're um, off the runway, as soon as you're done talking to the tower at the airport that you're leaving from. So this is going to be the first air traffic control really radar facility that's going to be handling you on the route of flight. And you can imagine it gets really busy after you've taken off on an IFR flight, so the last thing you want to do is have to fumble for this frequency. That's why we're going to write it down when they give us the clearance. And then finally is a transponder code, a squawk code as they call it. So this is going to be that four digit discrete code that we're going to put on our transponder so that they can associate the flight plan that we filed with the aircraft that they see on their radar screens. So you notice that the um, structure of how an IFR clearance works gives us this nice sort of nifty acronym of CRAFT, C-R-A-F-T, clearance limit, route, altitude, frequency, and transponders. So now we're going to use that acronym and we're going to write down, we're going to structure our IFR clearance, our instruction in that way so that it's easy for us to understand 
and it's easier for us to read back once the air traffic controller gives it to us. Alright, so now that we got that figured out, we want to figure out what the clearance delivery frequency is, which controller we need to talk to to get our IFR clearance. So if we look at the taxiway diagram for BWI, up in the top left is that list of frequencies, and we're looking for the one that says clearance delivery. We're going to take that frequency, and we're going to set it into our radio. So we'll just listen on the frequency for a minute here, just to make sure nobody else is talking so we're not interrupting anybody else's IFR clearance. And we're going to request our IFR clearance from this controller. And when we do that, we're going to be ready to write down uh, on our uh, craft acronym here, on our little diagram, the entire clearance that we get back, because we're going to be asked to read that back, and then obviously we want to have all the information. Baltimore clearance, Cessna 90334 Hotel, looking to pick up IFR clearance to Harrisburg. Cessna 99, correction, Cessna 90334 Hotel, Baltimore clearance, good evening, sir. Uh, clearance request, stand by one. Roger. So now the controller told us to stand by. What's happening on the back end is that the controller is looking for our flight plan and it's going to take a look at it for reasonableness, making sure that the route that we filed is reasonable, that the altitude is reasonable and legal. There shouldn't be a problem, right, because we picked our route straight off of FlightAware, which is just based off of previous aircraft getting routes. Um, the altitude is reasonable because we are above the minimum and route altitudes for the Victor Airway, and we're following the uh, West-East Convention by flying uh, uh, even thousand altitude on a westbound course. So, uh, 3-4 Hotel, uh, Clinton available by Jerry Cobb. 9334 Hotel, ready to copy. 9334 three, Hotel, you're clear to uh, the Mike Delta Tango Airport. Uh, via radar vector, direct echo Mike India, <coughs> and then ask file. Maintain 4000. Departure 128.7, squat 2435. Okay, Cessna 90334 Hotel is cleared to Mike Delta Tango, the Harrisburg Airport, via radar vectors to the Westminster VOR, Echo Mike India, then as filed, climb to 4000, departure frequency is 128.7, and squawk 2435. Cessna 34 Hotel, we're back, correct? Uh, you can call ground for taxi, uh, can I, and I'll give you a sign one way too. All right, Roger, we'll uh, contact Graham when we're ready to taxi. Thanks. Okay, so we got our clearance. We were able to write down everything. You notice that there's some acronyms that we use, um, just things to make things a little bit quicker, a little shorthand when we're writing things out. Um, you'll develop your own style, but, you know, basically um, things like uh, M for maintain or uh, CLR or something for cleared. Um, a lot of the times you'll hear the controllers say that you're cleared as filed. Um, so this is why we said before that it was important that we keep our filed route in just because let's say we have a really, really long uh, route that we filed for. The controller just says, okay, you're cleared as filed. Well, now we don't want to forget what we actually filed for. That would be just kind of be embarrassing to have to ask the controller for that back when it was you know, our filed thing to begin with. So we put AF. I know for you kids out there, AF means something different now, but, but here in, uh, in IFR land, it's going to stand for as filed. Um, so then we got that in, we got the rest of the information that the CRAFT acronym helps us out with. Um, so that's our IFR clearance, and then as you heard the controller, he told us that when we're ready, we'll contact ground for the next phase um, for our taxi for departure.